Dr. Bharat Pakania is a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School. He joins us now from Bath in the UK. Thanks so much uh, for being with us. You know, we've heard top medical experts explain what they believe are the serious risks of, of reopening too soon, but mostly because they still don't fully understand how this virus behaves and how it will behave uh, in the near future. But in that, they can't say if reopening uh, could pose no danger at all. So where do you stand? The signs, the basic signs is very clear. If you have a lot of circulating number of cases in the community, people will get infected. And when people get infected, they make more cases and then the case numbers go up. So on that subject, the science is very clear. You have to avoid getting infected. Therefore, you need a period of time when you are in shutdown so that you don't undertake activities whereby you will get infected. I'm so sorry to sort of hear that across the world, there are economic pressures to twist the science, to twist it and make it like as if it really is science, that we need to get going economically and it is okay to do so. Um, I think we need a prolonged period of shutdown in order to get on top of this virus. Okay, but I wanna, we really do have to stress how little we truly understand the behavior of the novel coronavirus, because some have actually said uh, by reopening the economies, we might be doing ourselves a favor by exposing the millions of potentially asymptomatic people to others who could therefore help great, the societies build some sort of immunity to the virus. That's, they still believe that there's a herd immunity potential here. You don't buy that at all. It's, it's complete you risk. Can see my, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can see my head shaking as you were talking. Absolutely not, without any single doubt in my mind. You do not create herd immunity by infecting human beings. If you follow what the WHO has clearly said, that we must not follow this path, because by creating so-called get infected, you will be okay, you create a lot of death. This is unacceptable. We must never create herd immunity by infection. It's not acceptable. Okay, I, I tell me then, I mean, uh, personally, how confused are you by this virus? Because your answers seem extremely confident. You're very sure that reopening these economies poses serious risks to the lives and well-being of, of our entire societies. So why is this virus so dangerous, like as, as nothing we've seen before? It is very dangerous. It is like we have nothing we have seen before. Of course, there are worse viruses than coronavirus COVID-19, such as MERS, uh, such as Ebola, but both MERS and Ebola are not so infectious. Unfortunately, COVID-19 coronavirus is very infectious. And as a result, it transmits so quickly, it generates more and more cases very quickly. And we had that exponential rise in number of cases. Therefore, the only thing we can do, unfortunately, is stay away from it. And by staying away from it, we reduce its circulation in the community. And therefore, afterwards, it becomes safer to come out. Doctor, let me ask you this. I actually discovered that in a workplace I was familiar with, uh, there had been people infected with coronavirus. They immediately tracked and traced everyone that those people had been in contact with in the immediate vicinity. All of them tested negative. When you hear cases like that, does that not give you confidence at all, though, that maybe this virus is getting less dangerous as we go along? No way. <laughs> I'm so sorry to disagree with you, but there is no evidence that this virus is attenuating. In other words, becoming less disease causing. Uh, there is no evidence there. It is out in circulation. And again, if I refer you to the WHO, he clearly said that um, there is very little seroprevalence in the community. In other words, what he's saying is most people who have had coronavirus have been ill rather than most people have been ill, got better and recovered. So we need to be very cautious, very careful with this virus whilst it is circulating in the community. Okay. We have a price to pay.
Okay, I just wish we could get the testing done properly so we could just really know who is out there carrying, you know, asymptomatic cases and, and more serious cases at the same time. I, I need to ask you this, though, before I let you go, because later in the program we're actually go going to be talking to an advocate for the Human Challenge Study. I'm not sure you've heard about it, but it's where they're expecting and hoping that volunteers, and they've got thousands of them already, will take an experimental vaccine and then purposely expose themselves to coronavirus to hopefully speed up the development of a functional vaccine. Now, it still hasn't been approved by the government, but as I said, thousands of people are willing to volunteer. Would you think that that's a good idea? Would it help us uh, get a vaccine out sooner rather than later? That is a experiment and it is not without its risks. So I would be very cautious, but it is an experiment. Now that same experiment has been carried out amongst primates, you know, macaque monkeys. And we need to now re replicate that experiment in humans to see if after you have been immunized, uh, that you are then exposed to the virus and you don't get ill. That will be very interesting, but it is not without its risks. Dr. Pakania, thank you so much for joining us from Bath. We greatly appreciate it.